You've been talking a lot about defence interoperability, particularly around working with Australia. So how will this pre-budget announcement help with that? Well, it will certainly help uh, when it comes to the vehicles and also uh, communication systems, but it also says to Australia which is our ally, our one ally, but also very close friend, that we are serious about defence. It's our very first defence budget, and as you know, it's going to be a pretty tough budget, um, but what it says is we're serious, we've got the defence capability plan coming out, um, we've got to do our part. Just on your point there about being serious on defence, you're currently cutting thousands of public sector jobs, so the government heading into this budget really is counting every single dollar. So why is defence that exception? We can't really have economic security if you don't have national security, and defence is an integral part of that. Uh, we also live in a very challenging geopolitical environment at the moment, and I also believe very strongly, if you look at the attrition rates, defence has been doing it hard for the last few years, and it's very important that we, we keep people, get the right people, train them well, and that we can, in fact, be a good ally and partner with Australia and our, our other friends. You talk about a really tough geostrategic environment at the moment, and we've seen just in the last week China and Australia, those tensions rise as well. What is New Zealand's role within this tough geostrategic environment, do you think? Well, we're a really good actor in the world. We're a good player, and people know that. So we are obviously supporting um, Australia and um, US and others when it comes to uh, matters, wherever it is, um, militarily wise we've been working with the UN where we've got troops in, um, in South Korea we've got people all around the world the Red Sea we've been a partner there so wherever we can we want to be part of solutions and, and in addition uh, next week I'll be visiting our troops who are training Ukrainian soldiers to go to the front line um, these are some of the things we do all over the world and we're just a very good actor just last week we spoke to New Zealand Prime Minister Christopher Lux and he spoke about New Zealand calling out China more. Now New Zealand is connecting to like-minded partners across Southeast Asia as well as the US. You talk about countries like the Philippines where New Zealand recently, where New Zealand is establishing new partnerships and that area is quite tense in the South China Sea. So as we see these increased tensions within the Indo-Pacific, what is New Zealand's role in that environment? Well, we're, a, we're very good friends with China, um, and particularly to understand is that, um, economically speaking, uh, China is our major trading partner. But at the same time, we're very aware of the fact that things are changing in the world. So we have to be, we always have to, to work a very, um, a very tight line, and that one is we have security on one side, we're part of Five Eyes, we're very happy to be that, have been over 70 years. Um, and so nobody should be surprised by the fact that we work with our military ally, Australia, and our like-minded Five Eyes friends. You talk about increasing New Zealand's GDP spend on defence. What will the Defence Force look like at the end of your term in government in the next three years? Well, I think you know we're around one percent now, but we will we are going to have to look at where we go from here. So that's why the defence capability plan, which I brought forward from the end of the year to June uh, to next month, so we can look at where we where we're going to have to spend and also how we can get more effective um, and more interoperable, particularly with Australia. Um, so where it's going to be in three years' time, well, it's going to depend quite a lot on the on the Defence Capability Plan, but there's always going to be improvements. And just lastly, I want to talk about New Zealand's push to increase innovation. One of the portfolios you look after is technology as well, and we talk about things like the second pillar of AUKUS, which is all about sharing advanced military technologies. Is this an area that New Zealand's going to be further developing? Well, it is important to note that New Zealand has some excellent technological expertise. We have people who are, just seem to be geniuses when it comes to technology and are working with defence as well. So there's going to be some opportunities there. Um, you know, New Zealand's still looking at AUKUS Pillar 2 as to quite what part we could have in it, and obviously no one's invited us yet to join. So these are decisions that the Cabinet will make, and we're going to look at what's in New Zealand's best interests. But in, as well as that, New Zealand can be a very good uh, supplier of technological uh, know-how to other countries as well. New Zealand Defence Minister Judith Collins, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.